Good afternoon. This is Canada Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for January 13th, 2018. Market is in bullish normal conditions on an annual basis. Looking at weekly RSI 14, it's still overbought at 89 out of 100. 10 day NDX, the short term price location is overbought also at 98 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic, this uh, stretch relative to the 200 and the slope of the 50 are both. Very strong green bullish. ADX uh, is a very strong 34.3. Now, that's unusual behavior in the S&P. That's getting into overheated uh, conditions. Very hard for it to maintain that pace. And so um, some consolidation or even a pullback would not be out of the ordinary. It would be expected. So uh, the guidance is to continue to take your positions, but to monitor your stops, especially carefully in the swings especially if they are themselves overheated and beyond the normal performance. Risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. Threshold between risk on and risk off is 1.0. The current reading at 1.039. We are well into risk on. Take that score, compare it to the last 5,000 trading days, and we find the average and standard deviation to compute the risk Z and that reading is 0.34, meaning that it is about one-third of a standard deviation above the long-term average. This is the 90-day histogram of that indicator. Um, You can see that we've had uh, rising lows, and uh, the indicator is uh, still working its way back up. Uh, It's below 1.0, so this is very favorable for swing trading. The next reevaluation for blended monthly rebalancing is in on or about 1 February. These are the current holdings for um, for January uh, and the leading candidates based on the closing prices on uh, Friday. So the leaders are still leading with uh, the Dow technology in Japan looking good. ETF2, the theoretical exposure still at 100%. These are the ETF portfolios um, using that blended monthly rebalancing uh, look back. You can see the Dow and, and technology leading the way. Um, Japan in third place, emerging markets coming in along with Latin America with a nice one month score. Uh, and the late leaders continued to lead this past week. ETF 32, which expands that data set a little wider. Um, US technology um, moving even ahead of, of the diamonds. Strong move in discretionary and energy financials and industrials, so really the U.S. Uh, really leading the way here. Um, the, the bonds and income and uh, agriculture and defensive plays and utilities, all on cash positions. Utilities are uh, really suffering right now as a sector. Um, I have to believe at some point people hunting uh, yield are going to uh, uh, start coming in to buy those on sale. Uh, So we will be watching that for a long-term position. But right now we're short. Uh, Boeing continues to dominate here in the Dow 30. Uh, This is when I've I've added the Dow 30 look. Um, uh, And you can see the real difference in performance, uh, even among these conservative large caps. Um, You have to believe that GE... Uh, should be turning around as a combination of both technology and finance, uh, and it's starting to perform. It hasn't begun to dominate yet, but um, General Electric is still on sale, along with uh, Merck and Procter and Gamble. I'll be watching for those uh, to reverse. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Caterpillar, Boeing, uh, Cisco, Walmart, all turning in nice performances. Chevron and Morgan leading the way this past week. The sector spiders, these are, uh, this is an expansion of the nine sector spiders. See, being dominated by energy and, and metals and mining right now. Uh, amazing performances. Transportation, uh, boating well for the longer term economics, uh, banks, regional banks as part of the finance cluster, and even health services uh, starting to turn it around. Um, so we see pharmaceuticals and health services starting to turn around. So we're looking um, in the healthcare sector spider as well. 
ETF max dominated by oil, home construction, metals, and mining. Um, India showing a little signs of cooling off, uh, but real momentum here in the energy and financials. Uh, market health check. The vertical blue lines are 10, 20, 30 days, 40, 50, 60 of look back. The horizontal red lines are resistance levels that are uh, once resistance levels are now support levels, uh, which if this price starts collapsing, these are the price targets where I would expect it to find support on the way down. Or if those collapse, like uh, pounce of cards, it would be tripwires uh, for targets all the way down here to Z3. You can see the 200 period moving average barely uh, noticeable. We've had three positive signals in a row from the MACD histogram um, and the PPO all well above the zero line. You can see the slope of the 30 period regression line uh, bottomed out here at a plus 0.14 um, and then the expansion lined up with the MACD histogram. What a really nice signal um, and has been riding steadily through um, the gains of the last 30 days. Uh, it peaked here at 0.44 which is uh, anything beyond 0 0.40 is exceptionally steep so that was a really outstanding 30-day period uh, and the pullback was hardly noticeable uh, before it resumed again with the MACD histogram signal and the uptick to an all-time new high uh, and that coincided with the 30-period uh, the pullback bottomed right here and has now resumed and is now well above even the previous hump at uh, 0.46 so again it's hard for uh, the market to do better than that over a 30-day period so when you combine that with the ADX, I mean, it's just confirming what we can see with our eyes from across the room that this has been a really exceptional move. Um, uh, you know, part of the gridlock, I think, in, in uh, Washington, along with the tax uh, relief bill and um, the inability really to do anything else, that gridlock in Congress is good for the economy. And right now it's the U.S. dominating the world in terms of uh, equity returns. So that's where our focus will continue to be. Um, you see uh, right now the S&P at 39 is better than EFA at 32 on the strength column. Inside the U.S. it is technology, then, mid, uh, then large caps, then mid caps, then small. Um, the two strongest sectors are uh, Japan and U.S. technology, Japan at 45, technology at uh, 44. Uh, two weakest sectors, Latin America and Asia West Japan. Uh, strength inside the sector spiders with energy and discretionary uh, utilities really getting smashed. Um, everything in the U.S. above average, the Dow exceptionally so. Mixed bag in Asia. Uh, mixed bag but generally under, underperforming now in Europe. Canada, Mexico, Brazil, all starting to yield back to the U.S. Only emerging markets really uh, are dominating here. Um, oil, and to a lesser extent, the other commodities and the other asset classes. So right now it's the U.S. all the time, plus energy. Uh, the ETF top 30, using that ETF2 lens, gives us the same kinds of insights, but from a different angle. Um, a multiple perspective on the market compared to BMR. Uh, metals and mining, again I looked for green and white. Metals and mining, um, S&P retail, discretionary and energy looking really good. Giving up some strength here in the financial select and uh, Japan dividend, um, IT and some technology. So these may have run their course but meanwhile energy continuing to dominate. The uh, ETF liquidity ranks the uh, top 30 ETFs based on average daily dollar volume of the last 30 days uh, times their market price gives you uh, the amount of money being slung around in these on average. Um, technology has now you know, is holding second place comfortably over uh, IWM that has, reverses a long-term trend. Uh, so I, I just think technology is back in a strong way. Uh, the ones in green in the ATR percentage are the ones, therefore, that are most liquid and have the highest relative intraday volatility, makes them great intraday candidates. So VXX, coal miners, and uh, oil and gas production, 
uh, doing well. Um, shifting to the daily report, uh, no signals and overreaction in channeling. Um, you see the Max Payne, uh, Intel, AT&T, GE, Verizon, Procter & Gamble uh, still um, leading the way downward, if you will, or underperforming. Uh, only a handful of uh, mechanical setups, Intel on channeling, Procter & Gamble on 5GD along with real estate and utilities, and then in the auto framer, uh, most of the same candidates. Um, but these test out well on uh, the risk-to-reward ratio based on trade location. Um, a handful of good frog quality numbers. Uh, Procter & Gamble has been uh, smashed over the last one day through three month time frames and there's an RSI 2 value of, uh, of 4 um, along with a 5 DD and a reward to risk ratio of 2.5 gotta love that 4.7 uh, reward to risk for Intel under dramatic underperformance and a channeling signal uh, excuse me um, meanwhile uh, Boeing just continues to crush it as does Caterpillar. Uh, stay with these until otherwise notified. <laughs> in the ETFs, uh, only a couple 5DDs here in the real estate and utilities. Um, RSI 2 for those two as well. Uh, really nice reward to risk ratios. Uh, silver making a move in, similar to gold. I like the move in in Mexico, starting to turn it around after a long-term underperformance, so we're still long Mexico. Daily pinch and stretch, usual suspects here. First column, these are the symbols that are the most uh, stretched above their 30-period um, moving average on a percentage and a z-score basis. Look at Boeing, holy moly, holy mackerel. Um, among the U.S. indexes, the S&P and Diamonds are both very well stretched uh, on a relative basis. Uh, IWM, not quite so much, but really exceptional moves here in the S&P and Diamonds. goes along with the narrative of dramatic outperformance at the start of the year. Biggest negative Z stretch, no surprises here. Uh, utilities, real estate, and Intel. Uh, most expanded pinch box, you get these when you have 30 days of outperformance, uh, directional moves, and that makes the river very wide. So it's more than just one day's worth of performance. This is a consistent uh, stretch. Uh, most compressed pinch box, this is abnormally low range variation, uh, both daily and over 30 days, so you get a very tight compression. XLP, McDonald's, Coke, and Apple all in that pinched condition. Then if all their uh, four regression lines are also tightly pinched, you get a super pinch candidate, Apple, McDonald's, and XLP. Uh, we framed those uh, and had about a 20 minute discussion on how to manage that trade in the advanced swing course uh, Q&A session this weekend. That was the first of 12 scheduled uh, sessions in that course. People have uh, access to about 50 hours of prepared material. Um, they submit questions and answers to me on that, and then we have a, a wrap-up at the end of each week, along with framing uh, the, um, uh, a lot of trade uh, signals from the weekend report, along with active portfolio management as we go. Uh, we're also doing daily trade debriefings along the way, recording those and uh, making them available to the to the members and the, um, and the students. Uh, really powerful learning environment and uh, getting good feedback from the participants so far. Uh, we're recording everything, so there's still time to join. Uh, I would encourage you to consider it uh, if swing trading is for you. Uh, the auto framer showing um, I don't know, half a dozen excellent candidates, including uh, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, and Agriculture. And the uh, regression line fractal framework. The top shelf in the green, these are the symbols that are the most numbers of ATRs below their RL270, meaning uh, deep discounted value. Um, and then the uh, bottom shelf in the red, these are the overheated ones. 
These are the ones that are the most number of ATR beyond their long-term fair value, which we treat as the uh, RL270. Uh, no surprises again. IBM, Caterpillar, Boeing. The daily squeezes, these are uh, symbols that had it, um, that have large average daily ranges, but whose uh, range on Friday was most tightly compressed. That ratio is expressed here uh, in this column. And so these are uh, uh, nice one day pop possibilities. Um, you can see the stretch in the S&P, that accelerating parabolic, uh, or, uh, the polynomial regression line, I should say, which is more adaptive than the straight line 30 period. So that shows an acceleration factor here. Uh, notice that we had a, uh, even though it crossed over, it rejected the reversion to the mean and crossed back over its 10 period in time to give us an alert uh, for a really strong move, which we have been participating in and happy to do so. So we're now almost four standard deviations above um, the 180-day average stretch relative to the 200. So this is a bull market that has um, that's accelerating. It's got a second wind going into the new year. So uh, very strong case for continued outperformance. Uh, the slope of the RL30 compared to the long-term last, you know, the last 10 years worth of, of averages shows that um, you can see just how strong this is. It's now above. Uh, one standard deviation above the long-term average, and it hasn't done that that many times. This is one of the, you know, dozen or so strongest 30-day periods. It can get even stronger, uh, but even after all of these peaks, there's uh, long periods of decay, uh, and so that's why we are cautiously optimistic. Um, once again, all three of the, re, uh, the moving regression line slopes when they normalized for z-scores are all better than 1.0. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. It hasn't, didn't happen at all in the last 180 days, but you can see this acceleration away from the river. That's what that looks like uh, in practice. Um, you see the river starting to get wider. Um, this would have been the natural place for it to fail. It didn't. And... Um, smashed a lot of shorts right there. Um, the S&P's volatility over different holding periods. This is if you had, uh, uh, if you look at the last, oh, 10 years or so, and say, what was the average holding of the last 40, you know, of the 40 days on average over the last 10 years? So there's about, um, it's about 2,500 data points. 2,500 different 40-day periods for holding. The average score was 2.4. Uh, the uh, reading today is 5.0. So when you take the average and the standard deviation of 0.05, this gives us a current z-score of 0.55. So this 40-day holding period of 5.9%, um, although it feels good, is not that exceptional yet. When we start looking at the z-scores, it's really uh, the 10 day uh, return um, of 3.4 percent is that is actually the only one that's even overheated. So uh, this this is still a market that, although it's been outperforming, is not dramatically overheated. Um, you can see the maximum scores here, and we're not pushing any of those boundaries anymore. This is that same reading, but for a variety of indexes and sector spiders and a couple other favored trading, uh, favored trading vehicles. Um, you can see how you know, XLP is really underperforming in the negative band here on 40 days um, and on uh, five days as well. Um, energy at 0.99. XLY at 1.23. Those are the two leading candidates for being overheated over the last five days. Um, uh, the diamonds over 10 days have returned almost 4%, and that's at 1.36. Uh, so that's in a, a 
that's a very healthy performance for the Dow. And that's everything I want to cover for this weekend report. Uh, this is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital. Keep your risk measured and your powder dry.